Hey everybody, Matumbo here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are playing some more Historic here on Magic Arena. And we brewed another sweet deck over the weekend. And I'm excited to bring this to you. So we're just going to hop right into it. And we are playing Shrapnel Foundry. So this is just a very low to the ground aggro deck. We're trying to put in creatures and artifacts into play as quickly as possible. And we're just going to try to overrun our opponents with both damage from our creatures and then damage from extra spells. So uh, again, this is a Luris deck. Luris being um, one of the most powerful cards um, really on Arena. And also almost it was one of the best cards ever made before they had to errata how companions worked. But um, Luris here, if you're not familiar with it, but you should be. It's a three mana companion. It's a three two with lifelink and it says once during each of your turns you can cast a permanent spell with mana value two or less from your graveyard um, and in order for this to be your companion um, you have to have each permanent card in your starting deck has to have a mana value of two or less so the way uh, obviously companions used to work is you didn't have to pay three mana to move them from your your companion area to your hand which made them super busted you could just cast them from where they were and then they rotted it later on but again Luris is still really broken. There's just a lot of great stuff that you could do early on, uh, a lot of cheap stuff. And then in this deck, again, what we're doing is we're playing things that are very, very cheap, and we're going to take advantage of being able to recast them and being able to put them in our graveyard and then just overrun with damage. So um, what you're going to see here is we're going to have we're going to have four copies of Ornithopter. Ornithopter is great because, again, it's zero mana, but it is a Thopter, which feeds into our Retrofitter Foundry. Retrofitter Foundry, if you're not familiar with, one-man artifact that has all these abilities... You can pay three to untap it. You can pay two and tap it to create a 1-1 one, one servo. You could pay one, sacrifice a servo to make a 1-1 one, one thopter. Or you could just tap it and sacrifice a thopter to make a 4-4 four, four construct. So again, having this ornithopter cost zero um, to be able just to, on turn one, play an ornithopter, tap one, retrofitter foundry, and sack your ornithopter, you have a 4-4 four, four in play. We also have barb spikes in the decks as well because these also make thopters. This does give us a 2-1 flyer for 2 mana, which is still really good value. Um, but if they go to kill our our Thopter that's attached to the Bard Spike, we can turn it into a 4-4. So again, really good value because we're getting an equipment and we're getting a 4-4 four four out of it. So it's a, it is kind of like a 2-for-1 deal. But we are playing, you know, 4 copies of Esper Sentinel. This is going to allow us to draw cards early on if they are playing non-creature spells. This does say whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell, each turn draw a card unless they pay X where X is the Sentinel powers, uh, the Sentinel's power, which is usually just one. So all they really have to do is get, they're getting tax for one. But a lot of times, um, you know, you have, you know, your opponents typically choose to ignore it because they have to if they want to actually, you know, ramp up or, or actually stay on curve. So this is a really great card. We also have four copies of Giver of Runes, one mana, one, two. We get to tap it to give protection um, from a color or colorless to one of our other creatures until end of turn. This is really good to help get through that damage that we need to do. Um, we have one copy of Shadow Spear just because this card is really busted. If we happen to draw it, we get to give creature one. We get to give a creature one one trample and life link, and we can do things with um, you know making our opponent's permanents lose hexproof and indestructible if we need to. Um, we are playing three copies of Invasion of Gobicon. This was kind of a last minute addition. Um, this just gets to, we get to look at our opponent's hand, remove one of the cards out of their hand, uh, we get to exile it, and they still get to play it, but they have to pay two more mana. But with this being a battle that only has three um, battle counters um, on it, this is actually really easy to flip over and, ha and actually has a really great ability because it says at the beginning of your end step, put a 1-1 counter on each creature that attacked this turn so we can just gradually grow our teams every turn. And usually we only need this to trigger one time on a couple creatures to just get the most ridiculous value out of it. But it also has the ability to where we can sacrifice this to just give our creature, all of our creatures uh, hexproof and indestructible. So uh, another great way to just cement um, what we have on the board just so we can get through and, and kill our opponents. We have four copies of uh, Mashiku's Reign of Truth. So for the first two chapters of this, we actually get to do like a little mini, um, you know, buff on our creature. That's going to give plus one, plus one for each artifact or enchantment we control. So this usually is going to be like plus four, plus five. It's pretty insane for just two mana. And then on the third um, chapter, it does transform into a creature that just essentially gets plus one, plus one for each creature. Or I'm sorry, for each artifact or enchantment you control. So we're going to get really great value from there. We have uh, copies of Yosha Declares War. So this actually has read ahead. So you get to choose what chapter it starts on. But a lot of times we're just starting it on chapter one. 
So we get a Thopter, which is again, great value with our, um, our Foundry. On chapter two, we get to tap any number of artifacts that we control. And then when we do, we get to deal that much damage to a creature or a planeswalker. So that could help get through a pesky blocker um, or a planeswalker that maybe we just need to get off the board immediately. And then on chapter three, we just get to give one of our um, artifacts that we control. Um, we get to make it a creature and we get to make it a 4-4 base. So we could give our, our retrofitter foundry, we can make it a 4-4. Uh, Shadow Spear 4-4, the actual equipment here a 4-4, or we could just turn one of our Ornithopters into a 4-4. Really powerful. And then last but not least, our burn spells that we're going to just use to close the game out. Uh, we're going to have three copies of Improvised Club. This is a two mana. Sack a artifact or creature to deal four damage to any target. And then four copies of Shrapnel Blast, two mana. Sack a uh, artifact only, but we get to deal five damage to any target. So again, this is these are really big bursts of damage. And these, these just close the games out. And um, op opponents usually just don't even see this coming. Sometimes people forget that these cards even exist. So you're getting in, you're putting them down to four or five, and then you're just like, boom, game over. So yeah, this deck, really, really powerful. We actually farmed a ton of games um, with this deck over the weekend. And um, we had a very high percentage win rate. I would say like between 85 to 90%, we were just crushing people with this deck. It is ridiculous. I definitely recommend giving it a, a shot if you have a lot of the cards. There are a lot of rares in this deck. So, um, you know, take that in consideration. Not only just the lands, but, you know, you have Esper Sentinel, Giver of Runes, Retrofitter Foundry, Shadow Sphere, Invasion, um, a ton, a ton of rares, and Luris, obviously. But no no Mythics. But, uh, but yeah, you know what? Let's just... Um, you know, just play play the game how you want to play, but this deck is is very powerful. But again, if you enjoy the deck, the channel, the video, please like, comment, subscribe, check out all the cool links down below, join the Discord, hop on over to twitch.tv slash Matumbo, and bring your deck ideas on the weekend. We stream on Saturdays and Sundays, and I would love to see your deck ideas, and we could potentially turn it into a video. But enough of that, let's just get into the deck, and we'll see you all at the wrap-up. Dark Ceph 86. Let's go. Okay. This is an alright hand. It's not a great hand. What is that? Swamp, mountain, or island? Oh, that was like an insane draw, though. Um, I think we're actually going to... I'm going to play this out this turn. That way we can get this 4-4 four, four online. Mesmeric Orb. I mean, all right. You got to race your millin. Your thing. This is actually pretty good. But it's like what's the worst that happens, right? Like maybe they Tasha's hideous laughter Tasha hideous laughter us. So I uh, yeah. Mill four. Um, mm -hmm. Any of these removal spells? That is. Might be wrong to go after this, but we're going to. We actually just start. Um, we hit two land. Two 
They probably just started this in chapter two, right? I would I would really. So we're gonna go after our giver of runes? Oh no, okay. Okay. So I mean I'm just gonna go straight to the face. Uh, do we want to chapter three this? Nine. Attack for ten. We attack for ten if we do this. No, we're just going to do chapter one. We're getting milled for four. We're still kind of high with cards. Um, I think we can race with no problem here, right? Because we're going to be attacking for six, seven, eight, 12, 14 next turn. And that's assuming we don't draw anything. So they have to have a blocker here. We could sack our light shield array if they try to get frisky. Because we don't we don't actually need any more counters, right? The the extra counters just don't do anything else because we're gonna just take so much of a chunk out of their life total that the extra plus one plus one just is completely irrelevant. Okay. Uh, fatal push. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this now. Because again, right? We don't actually need this anymore. 10, 12, 14. And then depending on what we draw here. Like if we draw one of our burn spells, then we win. Uh, just like that, right? Submit zero. Um, target this. And then... Uh, yeah, business... Uh, Business given. All right, that was a good uh, good way to start uh, with this deck. Sweet. I mean, that's good that you actually managed to get it up to two K, though. I didn't think that they could get that high. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess I'd rather Can we get the card draw engine on the board. Yeah, because if they if they burn, no, oh, they didn't have a burn. Yeah, I was going to say, because if, if they had a burn, I would rather th we draw a card off of it. But oh, well, they ended up not having a burn, but this isn't wit. This isn't like. Horrible first turn wizards, is it? It is horrible first turn wizards. 
Hmm. Am I supposed to kill that? I'm just going to try to race him. I mean, they, they have two damage spells, three damage spells. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. That's a little awkward. All right, so I'm going to... I think I'm going to end up sacrificing our... Our Darksteel Citadel here. I could just play this also. This becomes a blocker, and then I don't care if they kill it. Yeah. Hey, Paul, happy Saturday. Uh, which game are we talking about? We're talking about a uh, fairy tale fables. What's our opponent going to do? Dread Horde? Mm, I don't like that. Birthday Escape? I don't like that either. I guess they have it. Of course they have. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they have it? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I, I guess. Um, untapped. One, two... So I only have two, so I'm gonna do two damage. We're still gonna take two, so we're gonna take nine, we're gonna go to six. Yeah, this is bad, this is bad. Kill both of those if we need to. I guess it depends on how they spend their mana.
I mean, honestly, I'm going to I'm going to sacrifice this. This is going to This is going to die anyway. They might have a Wizard's Lightning here in response, which kind of gets us. Oh, they had another one. That's unfortunate. I mean, they should have 100% blocked the 2-2 there. Right? Because we are empty-handed. I guess we just lose to any spell. Right? They should have actually drawn a card there before they attacked. Because they could have drawn into a, into a Reckless Charge. Oh, well, uh, thank you for the gift. Thank you for the gift, opponent. Much appreciated. I don't understand why you didn't block twice, but I will take that against Wizards 100% of the time. All right, we go first. Um, I guess I'm going to start with a giver. Shot this into play. Is our opponent on a red deck because of their sleeves? No, are they on mill? No. Free reign of uh, anything you want here. I'm actually very surprised that they took the Retrofitter Foundry there over some of the other cards we had. Uh, I'm just going to let it go. I think they're on the... The, like, the Bowmaster deck, right? Like, the, the old... Uh, maybe they're not, though. Okay. I mean they obviously value I'm gonna I'm gonna let them have it. Alright, if they want to go after our giver, right, they're gonna spend a turn doing it because they also have to spend extra mana. And they didn't. That's very surprising. So I I am just going to run this out here. This probably gets countered. I'm very I was very surprised at that play. Okay. I mean, they know one of our cards. Yeah, and they... They scoop some goops it. Yeah, really weird play. Blocking and then not following it up with the kill spell for the giver runes there. Alright. Alright, is this a keepable hand? I think it is. Opponent goes first. Giver Ornithopter on turn one. Oh, God. It burns. They're squeezing our head. Oh, that's us. Ooh, retrofitter? Hmm. 
mean, that was a still an okay take. Still could run out of my hand like I would have anyway. So I'm sure they probably fatal push. Oh, they're playing. Okay, they're playing the same. This is a very popular deck. Very popular deck. Let's play another one. I'm just gonna make. I'm gonna make them have the the answer right. They could land Snapcaster Fatal Push. That gets us pretty. Yeah, that that, that might be what they're doing. Remember that time we drew three of these? Alright, what do you got in your hand? God, did you just draw another removal spell? That's kind of brutal if you did. I mean, if they play a land and then try to take it, right, we can we can sack this. I don't want to, but we can. I think that's going to be the most counters that we're going to get out of that. So they could, again, they could play this, try to try to take our giver runes. Oh, God, that's pretty brutal. But at least they don't have a... Submit zero, target this. We're still going to get in there. I still want these counters. Okay, what do you got? Draw a million. God, the ring is still such a stupid card.
I'm not gonna a good game back. It's just not something that I wanna that I wanna walk into. I mean, I don't know what, like, sequence of events gets them out of what we're doing right now. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, the ring's still, still dumb. I still think it should not be legal on Arena, but that's nah, just me. Uh, we go first, we can retrofit her foundry into... Alright, I guess we're going to keep this. This is kind of a weird hand, but... Ooh, Soul Warden. Okay, not not a card I necessarily wanted to see. But we do get to potentially kill it here, so I'm pretty okay with that. Um, hmm. Do I want to... Do I want to make a 4-4? Four, four? I think so. I'm going to tap this, I guess. And I'm going to keep this up for right now. Because, right, if they play... Uh, Do we get God? I don't think so. Let's just go ahead and play this. This gives us this gives us another removal next turn, which is fine. Um. Okay. Block. I mean, I know it's a free attack for you, but I, I just... Nothing wrong with them making that attack, right? All right, so... I am going to turn this into a 4-4... Um, in regards to tapping, I'm going to tap. This. And this. Because I'm going to kill this 2-2. This two -two, but I really need to be able to kill this. Um, this Righteous Valkyrie. So I'm going to play this. Um, I'm going to play this down. We're going to buff the... Like, it doesn't matter which one of these we buff, right? And we're going to attack. They're probably going to block the 4-4. Four, four. And then we can actually... 
we can actually kill this righteous Valkyrie. Right? Because we have we can deal four damage to it. Uh auto pay. And then we're going to I guess we're just gonna sack this. And then that'll prevent them from gaining life when they play angels, um, at least for this turn, um, which will give us a, a <laughs> hey, guess what? Remember that card we were just talking about being being super busted? Yep. That. Um, yep. Doesn't matter. I'm going to play this. We're going to do that. And no attacks. Pretty good, because uh, because an angel, because a creature-based deck, right? Playing, playing those rats makes a lot of sense. I don't even think I'm gonna play this Luris out, to be hundred percent honest with you. Sure. We're gonna we're gonna make a four four here. I definitely want to be able to uh, attack through this, but I, I really wonder what our opponent has because they actually have stops. Ooh, another Retrofitter Foundry. I am going to play this, right? Because it's going to put it at a five. So now they have to block this, this portrait. Um... If they take it, then we, we kill them? Yeah, you definitely have to block that one. We're just going to let it happen. Okay, and then we'll make a couple of... We'll, couple, we'll make a couple of one ones here. Because, like, what could potentially happen is they Wrath again. Then we make two 1-1s, one -ones, and then during our turn we play Luris, and then we get back, um, we actually get back the portrait. Yeah, so that's exactly how it's going to play out. And then we're going to we're gonna have enough damage to kill them. So this game's over. Oh, or we just, or we just draw one. Yeah. Good game. Good game, Julio. Okay. I mean, this is this is a hand. This is definitely a hand. Opponent's going first. They're probably playing goblins. They're not playing goblins. Okay. We're just gonna. Oh, you know what? Let's play this out too. Okay, this is probably the um, the combo deck with Scurry Oak and whatnot. So I, I, I probably have to play this down. Let's just put all the uh, all the ornithopter type creatures into play. We have to imagine that they have a collected company here, right? 
No. Okay. What do they take? Do they take our saga? They take our retrofitter foundry. Boo! Boo earns. I don't even know if we need to kill that, honestly. Eh, yeah, we do. We do, we do, we do. We just have to force through as much damage as possible, right? I mean, we, sh we should be able to kill them next turn with, with just our one flyer. But they have to put down at least some board presence to make it look like that they can't. Um, I mean, this should be enough in its own... Oh, well, we do... No, I mean, it's still enough. Right, we have a Giver of Ruin, so the likelihood that they can actually get through this. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it um, extra. And then we're just going to attack in. And then this should be enough. Because we have Giver of Ruins to make it unblockable. that resolve like if they get it they can't skyclave apparition it because it's a token um so they are gonna gain a little bit of life but we're just gonna say white here and they can't block and they take 14 that's a, that was actually a really good hit for them though two two potential blockers for that um but ultimately right like if we don't have giver runes game's over Okay, I mean, we're going to keep this. And basically play out our whole our whole hand. Slide a hand? Hmm. I mean, if this is Wizards, your their hand is going to be way too slow here. Let's take a peek. Oh, -ho! get out of here! That was a super fast game. It is in fact raining outside. Dang, our backyard is like a swamp right now. Holy moly. Faithless looting. Oh, here comes the uh, ultimatum deck. Oh, no, it's this deck. So I think I think we actually need to keep up. I mean, I'm going to It is what it is, right? Like I'm going to keep up Shrapnel Blast, I think. I think I have to. Faithless looting. Okay. Like, I actually feel pretty good about this. I 
I mean, we have enough burn in our hand to kill them, but this just ends the the combo. Okay. I mean, you're you're definitely you're definitely improving your board. But again, right? Like we have this. I couldn't remember if any of those cards that they're trying to do um gain them life. So, all right, hold on. Let me before we make any mistakes, flying and vigilance Are we dead? I don't think we're dead. Right? There's there's no way that we die here, right? When it attacks, create two 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance. No lifelink. This just hits. Um, okay. Like, do, do what you're going to do. I mean, I could also just, I could also just hit that, right? Okay. You have a way to gain life. You do not. All right, good game. Yeah, maybe we were wrong to prevent that from one turn because we could have just burned them out. But again, I, I couldn't remember if anything at the time had life link. But now we know. I mean, I guess I'm going to keep this. Sunken Hollow. Take two, or take zero, I mean. Sunken Hollow. Interesting. Uh, okay, well, that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. That was a uh, weird... Uh... I mean, it's a little unfortunate that we attacked with the Ornithopter, right? But Stifle? Yeah, that sounds like a great weekend. Well, we know there's no Crab, because they would have played Crab before Fabled Passage, but this could be like... Sack. Oh no, they and they can't actually because the Tasha's hideous laughter. Um, we're gonna play this down as white, so we could potentially cast Luris. This is a counter. Nice. 
I gotta force through this damage somehow, right? So. Come on, opponent. Come on. Come on. Let's go ahead and fatal push or whatever removal spell like uh, like we know that you have. They can spend like five minutes like figuring out if they want to get an island or a swamp. Forest. Okay. Forest. So they they might be playing Gaia's Blessings. Like I've seen some mill decks play Gaia's Blessings. Cling to Dust, Extinction Event. These are even. This is odd. So extinction event, like. Okay. Two, four, five. I think if we draw a land, we're good. Nine. No, oh, I think I think a land puts them to one. Come on, opponent. Five plus So it puts them to puts them to five. Okay. So I mean if they like shock a land in, we we can get them with this. Um, I don't want to just fire it off. Like, they have to deal with our board and mill us out in the same turn, so. Like, if they go land extinction event, then we win. Opponent, come on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is the first time playing? All right. Cool. All right, everyone. Welcome to the wrap up. And again, like I told you, um, I won't keep you long, but this deck was super powerful. We crushed it. Um, I think we played, what, uh, nine games that um, we recorded really quickly. And after this, right, we. You know, we, we played some other decks, and then after the stream, I went back and just uh, hopped into ranked, and I mean, I was just trouncing people. So again, this deck is really good. It is one of the more powerful decks. It's very powerful. It has ways to deal with a ton of cards. Uh, again, you can either fly over them, or you're just putting in big, beefy creatures to deal with them, or you're just burning them down. It's just a great value overall. I highly recommend trying this deck out again. If you have this, you can still... You can still uh, alternate out some of the cards. You don't necessarily need to play like the one Shadow Spear because it is just a one of. 
Um, you could take out the barb spikes if you want to. Um, but I really feel like everything else is kind of uh, necessary. Oh, and the I guess the invasions could probably come out too. But again, I, I felt like invasion was actually like really top notch. I had I've had multiple people just uh, concede as soon as you play like turn one ornithopter retrofitter foundry make a four four turn two invasion uh, you know get rid of their like mass removal or their target removal that they that they're not able to cast yet and then the game's just over. So uh, yeah, but again. Um, great deck. Try it out. Uh, other than that, I'm not going to keep you all for too long, like I said. Uh, again, I just want to remind you all, if you enjoy the deck, the channel, the video, please like, comment, subscribe. Check out all the, uh, the cool links down below. Join the Discord. Hop on over to twitch.tv slash Matumbo. Would love to see you all during the stream. Um, share, share the video. Uh, that's something new that I don't really ask for. Um, just trying to help grow the channel. Um, you know, we have a new set coming out in a few weeks I'm super excited for. Um, it's going to have a lot of large uh, dinos. Um, and you know, I'm sure people are going to want to see crazy dino builds. So, but yeah, um, again, I appreciate each and every one of y'all, but please stay safe and we will see you all next time. Yeah.